Bless you, my brother. Amen. Praise God. We do give God the glory and all the praise of what he's doing. Amen. How he's blessing us, how he's moving here. Amen. Upon at, at House of Prayer and also upon this rock. Amen. To God be the glory for the things he is doing by his spirit. Amen. This is the day. Amen. The Lord's made. Praise the Lord. And we're glad about it. Amen. And one thing about it, when you got him, when you come to know him, amen, it's just not the church days that he's good, but every day that the Lord, amen, allow your eyes to swing open, whether it's a Monday, a Tuesday, Wednesday, all the way through back to Monday again, it is the day the Lord's made for us to be glad and rejoice, amen. So we thank God for you that's here and you that have tuned in by the way of internet. Amen. Wherever you may be, praise the Lord. It is our prayer. Amen. That our Father and the God that we've come to know yes. will keep seeing you through it all. As we look to him in prayer, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come to the throne of grace with full assurance in whom we have believed in. There is none like you nowhere. And we praise you for just being your sons and your daughters. We thank you for being servants of you. Yeah. Our heart's desire is never to rise no higher than your feet. Have your way within this service this morning and minister to the needs of the hearer. Those that's hearing, those that are in the internet land, moved by the power of your spirit. We know the needs may be great. Some is standing in need of this and need of that. And God, you know exactly what it is. But God, we thank you that you are greater than all the needs that need to be met. And you're more than able to meet them. So we're praying today, those that are going through in their bodies, that you would heal them and raise them up. Those, oh God, that are going through confusion in their minds and discouragement in low valleys, let them know that you are a lily even in the valley. That you're able to lift a bow down heads up and give strength to their feeble knees. Move this morning in this service and breathe upon Zion like never before. That there will be running that comes from above. That there will be inspiration that comes from the fire of the Holy Ghost. We commit this service in your hand that you might have your way in this part. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said amen. Come on, let's give them a praise with the clapping of your hands and the amen, the shouting with the lips. Amen. He's worthy. Yes, God is. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. We thank God. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. What a joy it is. Amen. To be here this morning. Praise God. We thank God. Amen. For him being who he is. Amen. Who have made us what we are today. Amen. I never shall forget. Amen. What the Lord has done for me. Amen. It gives me encouragement and hope. Amen. To know and realize. Amen. The very thing that he's done for me, he can do for somebody else. Praise God. And I mean to tell you, it is our desire that the will of the Lord will be done. This morning, amen, if you come away with me quickly in your Bibles, amen, we're going to turn to John, amen, chapter 20 is where I'm going to have Sister Lisa reading this morning. Amen. In John chapter 20, thank God, amen, and then we're going to deal with a couple verses in Luke 19. Oh, bless him. Amen. Praise God. And we're going to seek to pour out to you, amen, what the Lord, amen, by his spirit will have for us to hear on today. Thank God. And we're really praying and we're pulling for the people of God and amen. not just the people of God, all mankind. Amen. Praise God that if you are saved, amen, and you feel like you're getting wore out or you feel a little drained or Amen. You're feeling, amen, like you're running out of gas. Amen. Or want to throw the towel in. I come to let you know this morning, don't you dare do that. Amen. God is a good God and you can make it in him. Amen. You got to realize, amen, on this journey and that that we go through, even though it consists of trials, tests, 
Amen. Some fiery trials and tests can come your way. Amen. Praise God. If you can hang on and hold in there, you can realize how that thing also can work together for your good. Amen. The God that we serve, he's not what most people have sought to present him to be. Amen. Praise God. We're serving the type of God that don't want to see no man perish. I mean, he want, I mean, he provided such a way, amen, that all that would call and come to him, he would hear the call. Amen. When he created man, when he created his creation, amen, he had and she had union. And I thank God in spite of the fall, in spite of the way man went and the decision he made, God is the type of God that did not give up on him. Amen. He provided a way. And so I'm here this morning to encourage you. Amen. You got to keep running on. Amen. Sometimes when you're running, amen, I mean, sometimes you might come to a walk. Amen. You might come to a walk. And I need to let you know if you come to the walk, just keep walking. I mean, sometimes you might come to just a stop. If you come to a stop, stand. Therefore, just never retreat and never go backwards. Praise God. I mean, God got ways of sending you encouragement. I mean, if it have to come by way of the preacher. If it have to come by, amen, by the way of what you would believe. And I found out God will use the mouth of a kid, amen, to let you know, hey, God is watching you. Amen. Praise God. I'm minded as I stand here. My son is in the congregation. I can remember, amen, years ago when we was just driving. We was in the truck and he was a little kid. Amen. He had to probably be about five to six years old. Amen. And I mean to tell you, Sister Anna, we driving down Manchester. And my mind was just, I was off into, you know how sometimes we just caught up in thinking, I mean, what need to be done? How it's going to get done? Or whatever we want to. And I'll never forget Amen. Because he's been one since he's been here. Always eyes been on dad. And I'm just driving. He's sitting there looking in that seat. He looked up and he said, what are you thinking about? Oh, my God. And amen. And I mean to tell you just that, just that little bit. What are you thinking about? I said right there. And I'm telling you, I knew that was my son. Amen. But I knew that was God talking through my kid. Amen. Because he didn't know what I was thinking on. Amen. And I said, Lord, that's the truth. Amen. I'm casting this on you. Amen. Praise God. Realizing you care for me. So I'm just here to let you know God is concerned about you. Amen. And don't you never think, don't you let the devil tell you he had forgot about you. Don't you let the devil tell you God don't care and he don't love you. Amen. Amen. And this goes for everybody. This not just for saving people. This for the sinner man too. Because God loves him too. And God is shifting the church, aligning the church with his heart, his mind, his will. That we can be representatives of that very fact. Amen. That he loves you. You may be bound, but he loves you. You may be addicted, but he loves you. Amen. You may be hurting. You may be wounded. Amen. But he loves you. Amen. And he is the remedy. Amen. For your situation. Is that all right? Amen. And so in the meantime and in between time, those of us that say, amen, we're running to see Jesus. Amen. And those that may not be on the Lord's side as of yet, amen, I'm, still, I'm giving you this salutation, amen, and this invitation to come on and run to Jesus and run for him. Is that all right? This morning, amen, in the book of John, the gospel according to John, the 20th chapter, I'm going to have a reading at verse 1. Don't read no farther than verse 10. What do the Bible say? The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early. Uh -oh. When it was yet dark unto the sepulcher, mm -hmm. and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Yes. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter. And to the other disciples whom Jesus loved and said unto them, they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher. Uh -huh. And we know not where they have laid him. Hold on right there. Amen. Here we go. Amen. And we're picking up in the gospel according to John in the 20th chapter dealing with the resurrection of Jesus. Amen. And we understand for time don't permit us. Amen. But what ends up happening, what we're picking up, amen, because of what went down, what the disciples, the church, amen, had seen with their naked eyes, amen, they, and what they seen caused them to let the words that they have been taught for the past three years to slip. 
Amen. And I mean, they saw the agony. They saw the crucifixion. They heard, amen, the evil talking and speaking of men and women, amen, towards the Savior. Then deliver the Messiah, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And they saw him give up the ghost. They saw him take his last breath, amen, upon the top side of the earth, amen, in that body. Amen. And I mean to tell you, the matter got the best of him. Amen. And here it go again, because I'm telling you the type of God that we have, amen, when there's a call on you, and when, amen, the call has went out, and I got to tell you something here, that there's a call that has went out to, from heaven to all mankind. Amen. Praise God. And it is come to Jesus. There is a call. Amen. The calling of the Lord is for you to come out of whatever this seem to be. Amen. That ails you. That situation that seems to get the best of you. Amen. You got to realize something here. When Jesus saw the conduct, the conduct of the church. Amen. That he called unto himself. And when he called them, he called them with a purpose. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. Now, look, Peter, James, John, the apostles, amen, that we understand they came to be when they was disciples. They didn't understand it all. They didn't see it in the fullness. But we have a record that he called them. Amen. Praise God. And they followed the master for the three years. And he spoke things that when things happened, they might believe. He spoke concerning, amen, his crucifixion. He spoke concerning they were going to kill him, but he gave them hope to realize if they do this, amen, on the third day he can raise that temple up. Amen. And I mean to tell you, they he spoke some things to them that nothing will catch them off guard. Amen. But I got to let you know this morning, praise God, to help you, because so many people, because when we see the state of the ones church, amen, that we were once in after all this took place, they wasn't in a good spot. They went back. They got defeated. They got despondent. They got discouraged. Amen. But God was still on the throne. Amen. I mean, he was still God. All power was still in his hand. And he was concerned in such a way that he was not going to leave them in that state. Amen. In that downward state. Amen. And it's time because it's too many. Amen. For long duration has been on a downward spiral. Amen. In such a way, amen, where it seemed to be they've given up, that it seemed to be they lost hope, they lost their confidence, but God has sent us this morning to let you know, hey, it ain't over till it's over, amen, and I mean to let you know, amen, if God said it, it's going to come to pass, is that alright? Amen, he's not like people, I know you might have suffered some cruel sayings and some cruel things from men and women, and many people amen, have suffered injury from the local bodies of the churches. Amen. I mean, they made a bloop, they made a blunder in it because the people are working where they was to be in God. Amen. Then it became all about them. But I come to let you know, it's not about amen what people say about you. It's about what God's thoughts are concerning you. And I let you know this morning in the love of God, if you can look up, then you can leave. Amen. And so this morning as she's reading on, I mean, I wanted to set that because some things have taken place and we didn't know our Bible. We're dealing with the resurrection of Jesus. And I mean to tell you, if there's ever been a time for the preacher, the fivefold, the clergy, the bishop, the pastors, the, the prophets, the apostles, the teachers, the evangelists, to start preaching this resurrected Jesus, my God, that men and women can get up. Amen. That they can escape the corruption that's in the world through lust, that they can be healed, that they can be delivered. Brother, it's time to preach Jesus. And I said preach Jesus, not psychology, amen, not politics, oh, come on here, not worldly affairs. It's time to get all men eyes engaged upon the King of Kings. Read on, Sister Tony, for me this morning. Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the sepulcher. Uh -huh. So they ran both together and the other disciple did outrun Peter. Oh my. And came first to the sepulcher. 
Now, I wonder who now, I love the way the scriptures wrote here because it said the other disciple. Amen. We know Peter is running, but the other disciple, I mean to tell you, he got them little feet to move him. Amen. And he beat Peter, praise the Lord, in the, to this support after he got this news that was brought back to him. Amen. And I'm praying that something is bubbling down in your soul right now because we're going to hit it spot on. Amen. It's time to run to see Jesus. Amen. It's time to get some running in your feet. I mean, some running in your feet. Amen. It's time, amen, praise God, to let the Lord hit your feet that you can run on and run for him. Now, this other disciple didn't have a name, but this morning as we preaching this, amen, I pray God that you put yourself there. Amen. Because I'm telling you, I'm not letting nobody beat me. I love you, but you can't beat me to him. Amen. I love Brother Reuben, but brother, I got to see Jesus. Amen. Come on here. I love all of y'all in here. Amen. But at the end of the day, I'm going to meet you. I'm getting there. See, we can strive in that race and we ain't got to get envious and jealous of one another because if I do get across before you get across I'm going to pull for you come on brother run on amen because at the end of the day amen we got to run for him somebody say amen run on sister Tony and he's stooping down and looking in saw the linen clothes lying uh -huh. yet when he not in then come a Simon Peter following him uh -huh. and went into the sepulchre. So he stooped down, looked up in that tomb, and he saw the clothes on the floor. Amen. And he didn't even go in. Come on, keep reading. And then came Peter because Peter was, Peter did something a little different here. Come on here. And seeing the linen clothes lying and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Yes. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. Yes. For as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. They did what? They knew not. They knew not the scripture. They didn't understand the scripture. And see, we are in the hour, and I thank God for Jeremiah that the Spirit of God gave him way back then in 3 and 15. And I will give you pastors according to my heart, not the seminaries. Amen. It's not the bishop going to present him. Amen. No man going to do it. God is going to do it. Amen. He's going to give you pastors according to his heart that just weren't going to give you a bunch of knowledge. They weren't going to feed you with knowledge. But then they were going to give you understanding. Yeah. Amen. And right here with the scriptures letting us know, because remember now, the apostles, which we come because we know the end of it. Amen. They are in the discipleship still. That means they are learners. They still learning. Amen. I know. I know. We got them over here. Amen. They done learned it all. Amen. And they don't seek no more. And I mean, they don't hunger for no more. They not even inspired to get more from God. Like God ain't got no more for you. I got to tell you, honey, he got a whole lot more. Amen. And don't you never forget the yearn, the hunger, and the thirst for him. Because the minute you do, you don't realize that you're going backwards. And I don't know nobody, amen, to get something that's good, don't want no more. Amen. Look at us. Some of us, amen, I always had all this midsection and some of us ain't always been as big as we are. Amen. But because we like them pies and all oh, y'all help me. Amen. We like them meals and we can like them hamburgers, brother. Amen. And I mean to tell you, when you like it and you eat it, it's going to be some changes that take place in you. And I mean to tell you, amen, it's the same thing in the spiritual realm. If you keep on designing and wanting to eat of him, it's going to be some changes to take place in you. Now, I advise you get overweight and get heavy in God. Amen. But you watch that stuff in the natural, amen, because that stuff bring on diabetes, high blood pressure. All type of other stuff But in God, look at you can stay hungry for him Amen, and keep on eating for him And when you eat for him, he'll give you some control Amen When it come down to this other stuff Amen, and I thought a lot of people would have said Lord, help me in that right there Amen, because I'm telling you something right now Amen, it wouldn't hurt none of us Amen, to lose a few Somebody say amen Ah, uh, see, see, when we get to looking at ourselves, we like looking at other people, but we look at ourselves and the challenge is on us, then it looks a little different. Amen. But I'm saying, Lord, help me. Amen. Because I don't want my knees to start hurting. Come on here. Keep reading for me, Sister Tony. Read on. Then the disciples went away again into their own home. 
Uh, now what ends up happening here and what I want to bring your attention to this morning because this is about running. Amen. And I mean, if you're running, run on. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Hallelujah. God. It, it seems like, amen, something has sought to impede. Amen. And your pace is not as where it used to be. Amen. I'm going to help you with something this morning. It's time, amen, to really focus. Mm. It's time to really zoom in, amen. It's time to learn some things. I mean, catch that second wind, amen. And many times when we look at it in the natural, amen, when you deal with runners, amen, we don't, we just see them running, amen. We say, man, he run a marathon, amen. I got a cousin of mine, amen, that I've come to realize he runs, and I mean, he's running at the top level. Amen. And by me being uh, someone that has some type of athletic background, I realize, amen, when people are doing such a thing, the preparation for to run in that race, amen, it looks like, whoa, whoa, but they have to prepare to do that. Amen. I mean, they put they, they put themselves through a regiment. Amen. Many times, amen, that the people that don't see what goes with it. Amen. That they might be able to finish the race. And I pray God this morning, amen, when you've been called into the race or now that you are in the race, amen, I got to help you with something. He's going to help you. He's giving you your regimen. He's going to show you. He's going. They're going to be training. There's going to be, I mean, you're going to go through some exercises because you got to work out your salvation. Amen. Did you not know the Bible did teach the church? Work out your salvation. I know we're trying to work out everybody else's, amen, but he said you work out yours. Amen. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. Because I mean to tell you, amen, if you don't work out and you try to get out here and run, you might faint. Amen. You might not come close to the finish line, but if you put some work in there, amen, if you put some work in there, amen, look, you're going to realize you can finish this race, amen, and then I come there and carry you. Don't worry about it if you don't beat me. Don't worry about it because I'm going to beat you. Don't worry about it if you don't beat the next person. Amen. I'm not worried about it if you get there before I get there. Amen. Because at the end of the day, it's about finishing this race. Amen. Because the race is not given to the swift nor the strong, but he that endureth to the end. Now, anytime you get some endurance, my God, brother, you have did some preparation. Amen. You done had some workout. You prepared for that journey. Amen. And that's what God desires to do for all mankind when he bring them out of what they come out of and when he bring you into this new life. Amen. He give you a whole new regimen of how to live. Amen. He give you how to work it. Amen. And I need you to know something to this morning, too, since we talking about working. Don't you get this confused, amen, with doing works. I'm talking about the work that he called all men to do is to believe. Jesus said this is the work. The work is to believe on him who he has sent. Amen. Look here, so don't you never think it's your righteousness. You just got to obey whatever he say, whatever he allow you to see, walk therein. And that's how you work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And so when I'm bringing this out, so running is to move and it's to move a little quicker than walking. Amen. But I got to tell you, if you're not running and you're not moving too quick, just don't 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 stop moving. Well, preacher, I stop moving. But I tell you what, then, if you stop moving, amen, I'm going to tell you stand there and you stand there, amen. Help, and the word is going to help you gird up the loins of your mind. And the word is going to sit there, inspire you, you give you your second win. Amen. All, all right, preacher, well, what about if I fainted, if I fell out? Amen. Then look at here. If you fainted and you fell out, you're just right for God if you look up to him and say, God, help me. Because at the end of the day, what I want you to see no matter where you at while you're running this race, the God that we serve can help all. Somebody say amen. Well, what about the preacher since you're talking about the sinner, man? He, uh, and God loves him so, and he ain't even in the race. See, that's what I'm saying, amen. See, I'm glad you asked that question. God is concerned about him because he want to get him in the race. Because he don't want him going in the way of death and destruction. He want him in the way of life and peace. Because it's still God's will for no man to perish, but they all have everlasting life. And since you did have that thought and that question, amen, then we that are the people of God should not 
not have an attitude, amen, against the sinner, but we should have love, amen, that God can use us, amen, that we can uh, present a God of strength and help to them also. Because at the end of the day, I know many walk with the Spirit and say, oh, look at them. They do this and they do that. But that ain't God's Spirit, amen. That's not God's Spirit, amen. God, amen, looks at a man or woman that seems to be in a bad shape. And you, they, they need to know how God longs for them to turn to him. I mean, how he stands ready with open arms to receive them. He ain't sitting there trying to look at them, talking about, look what you did and how you did it. Now, uh, God already know what you don't know. That's man that acts like that. God comes to save that which is lost. And if we're going to run, we better get our attitude like God. We better get our mindset like God, those of us that's in the Lord. Amen. That we can run this race and run it with some patience. Somebody say amen. Amen. So we look at this in verse 2. The Bible said Mary Magdalene. I mean because Mary was one that he touched her life. And didn't nobody know like, like, like Mary and the Lord know, amen, the life she once lived. And she sat there just like everybody else and saw the crucifixion, amen. And it was so tremendous. It was so, amen, that thing was so abusive. It was so demonic, amen, and monstrous, amen. And Mary watched it all, amen. My God and Mary, amen, sat right there. And I mean to tell you, oftentimes people overlook this, but God made me to know something. Amen. He says, son, check out how it was Mary that ran to the sepulchre. I mean, Mary, amen. It was something in Mary to do such a thing that Mary done. Mary had to push back all the darkness and all of the doubt that was seeking to come her way. And she began to have to think about, hey, I mean, I just can't believe this. I just can't accept that this thing is over. I mean, my God, her love for the master that she had and the relationship she built with him while she was here. God gave her the wherewithal and the ability and the thought to say, I gotta go see Sister Ethel. I just gotta go be, I mean, look at here. If he's at that tomb, I'd rather be where he's at. Amen. Mary began to have to have some type of thought that God gave her the ability and the wherewithal to run because you gotta be drawn to him. Anybody that's ever get to Jesus, you've been drawn to him. Amen. And Mary found herself walking on that third day and getting up over there, amen, and finding out that when she went, amen, and she ran, praise God, and she saw the sepulchre, the sepulchre, amen, the stone was taken away from that place, amen, and she, she beheld what she beheld, I mean, here come that running, here come that inspiration and that excitement, amen, that something began to say, wait a minute, he's not here, it had to get something with him, amen, I mean, he's not here, amen, because I would have you to know something church God amen don't reward doubters James taught the church let that man think he don't he's not going to receive anything from the Lord if the enemy can make you doubt amen you can never see Jesus amen but all oh, if you can muster up something if you can sit right there and say look I know it look a certain way but I'm, it's something in me that yet believe amen I can make it it's something in me that yet believe that God is more than able I mean if that's something down in you is telling you to go ahead then go ahead because Mary amen what was down in her gave her to go ahead and get on over there to that sepulchre now when she began to run because we, we're focusing on running running to see Jesus as she be saw the place and the stone was taken away in verse 2 then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and the other disciple amen whom Jesus loved amen and so when we write that amen look here I love the fact that I understand he loved them all. But since the scripture underscored whom he loved, amen, if you allow me, I'm just going with this. I mean, it must have been John. Amen. And I mean to tell you, that's why John was able to outrun him, amen. Because John had a special place in Jesus. He can lay his bosom, head in his bosom. I mean, they would say, John, we know you can get it from him. Can you go talk to the master and see what he tells you? Amen. And I mean to tell you, amen, that's why there ain't nothing wrong with giving God your all in all. Amen loving him with everything you got. Amen. It was Apostle Peter that told the church because Paul ran and I mean he ran. He found himself getting more than the original 12. Amen. Because of his love for him. 
But this is what happened. He ran and he, she ran and she told the brethren. Amen. And I want you to get this. In spite of what had taken place. In spite of what they were at that present time. Amen. Just the inspiration of knowing. Amen. He is risen. Amen. And I mean to tell you. I mean it was because they had it within them. But because what he had taught them. Because what he had spent time with them in the three years. I believe them all. Amen. They really had a hard time just accepting that this thing had come to an end. Amen. And I mean to tell you the proof was in the pudding because we find out through scripture and through the record they all got in pace and they wanted to see another start seeing them and Peter got to running and maybe Peter had too many. Maybe he ate a little too many. John got the four and he ran and saw it and said oh my God. Amen. He is not here. And I believe things begin to pop and I'm bringing this out like this because some of you need to realize amen God is above that very thing that's coming at you that very thing that's trying to oppose you he rose above that all what do you mean amen I mean that adversity that opposition that the devil is bringing your way you got to understand when he got up he got up over that to lift you up over it what do you mean I mean you can make it in Jesus he knows what you're going through he knows you're hurt he knows your pain and he comes to bind up the wound and to pour in the oil and wine. He didn't come to sit there and, 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 and badger you. You know you shouldn't have done that. You know you're no, 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 no. Amen. He saw it all. He knows your thoughts are far off. You just need to understand he's there to help you. Somebody say amen. Because the God that we serve, amen, Jesus, when he left the church, amen, praise the Lord, and he taught them, he said, Look, I called y'all with purpose. I called y'all into a calling you ain't even understanding yet. And I mean, my will and the purpose of the call shall take place. And I need to let many of you know there's preachers that have given up on God. There's pastors that threw the towel in. But my God, amen, up, get you out from under that juniper tree. Up, get you out of that discouraged state. Amen. We got a God to glorify. We got a God to magnify. We got a God, amen, to preach and let men and women know, amen. He got me up. He can get you up. We got a God that we can preach. He's not dead. He's not dead. He's not in no tomb. He's not in no box. But he reigns and rules from heaven above. And all power is in his hand. He got power to help the sinner. He got power power to help the believer. He got power to help the homosexual. He got power to help the fornicator. He got power and strength to give to the drug addict. He got power and strength to give to the gambler. Amen. At the end of the day, it's not for those that's been called out to look down on nobody, but it's for you to let them know what you need. God got it. Because when Jesus was on this cross and he was resurrected, when he died, amen, these words before he died, he said, it is finished. My work on this side is done. My work on this side is done. Y'all have stretched me wide and I want you. Amen. If you lift me up, I'm going to draw all men. I mean, the enemy, if he could have handed all back, he wouldn't have never crucified Jesus. But all he didn't know, amen, he could not keep him in that grave. He didn't know if you kill him, amen, you're going to lose your keys. He didn't know if you kill him, amen, you're going to lose your authority. Because when Jesus died upon that tree. Amen. As they hung him on that cross and he said it's finished here. He went down into principalities. He went down in the hill and put a whooping on everything that was down there. And when he walked up in there, amen, everything had to bow down. And he didn't ask for no keys. He took the keys. And so while he was down there doing work, here go the church on the top side. This carriage backslid, went back. No no light, no inspiration, not running for them no more, went back to their own occupation. There's something like that's happening now. Amen. Because see what has happened, that thing came up in here in the way of a pandemic and those that really wasn't in Christ, uh, that was looking for an excuse not to assemble anyway. Amen. That really wasn't in God, but they was in the choir. Uh, that really wasn't in God, but they was in the pew. That really wasn't in God. Oh, help me, Lord. Uh, they really wasn't in God, but they were sitting up there 
there doing whatever they were doing in the church. Amen. This thing manifested a whole lot. And God saw it the whole time. And where the enemy had brought this thing in here, God has turned around and made it for the church good. Amen. Because he wants a running church. He wants a church to be full of inspiration. He wants a church to be full of confidence. He wants a church, amen, to run and let men and women know that he is risen. Here it is, Mary went up in that thing and saw him gone. Peter and the other brother, John, end up seeing that he's not there. And they begin to go back and talk it over. And you know now, amen, I just believe when they went back talking, I understand all the evil that went done. I understand all of what they saw with their eyes. But when you see the glory of God, when you see the greatness of God, I don't believe when John, James, Peter, and all the rest of them got together, amen, they weren't sitting up there talking about amen the Roman soldier they wasn't sitting up there talking about the people that said this to him when they was out there they got together because they were so inspired to see he's not there and the angel have let us know amen he's risen and this sister's brought back a report unto us I believe they begin to talk about Jesus and if we won't make it through anything you got to get around folks that will magnify Jesus you got to get around people that will talk about the goodness of God and let you know in him there's hope. Amen. That's not going to bash you, beat you down, step upon you, but that's going to reach out unto you with the love of God. And if you down, they're going to seek to lift you up. Amen. I mean, my God, it's time to get around those that got God, that got God on their mind and that's running. Amen. To see that Jesus, that we can inspire others. Amen. It's time to get up from the spot that you are. That inactive place where you at where you once used to be on fire where you once, amen, had a heart like his, where it was full of compassion. You were not running around, amen, wanting to see God kill up everything. Amen. You know not what type of spirit that you have. Amen. Jesus dealt with the church as they were in their maturing and growing up state because it seemed to be, amen, others. They rejected him and he decided to go straight through. And they said, look, should we call, find out? And Jesus turned to the follower. He turned to the church. Uh -uh, that ain't the type of church I want. Amen. You know what not man of spirit you have. Amen. I don't have a spirit to call fire down on nobody. I come to save that which is lost. He rebuked the church and I mean to tell you many of us are standing in a good old place of getting rebuked because our spirit is not like God no more. Amen. I mean to tell you we don't have a heart of compassion. You got preachers that ain't got God's spirit but they preaching. Amen but God got a spirit to love he got a spirit to help if he sees something that's crooked messed up he know he can make it straight he don't fall out and get full of adversity and get to grumbling and mean and all that and my God that's what many have done you would think they were junior gods I mean they want to bring down judgment they want to bring down condemnation I got to tell you you in the wrong chair honey you not to get back on your knees and get at the feet of the master you let God have that chair let him sit in that because he going to judge one day but he called the church to be the light he inspired the church amen to be a light to be the salt of the earth we're here amen to help men and women come on in amen we don't want you to we don't want you to we don't want you to perish we don't want to see you destroyed we want you to experience this life that he blessed us with because you know what ain't none of us always been safe and ain't none of us always did the right things and somewhere you got tripped up to but God delivered you and you should never forget and I love this experience uh, that the church had because I mean to tell you when they all went back and Jesus got them up uh, after that resurrection amen and they begin to realize he's risen you'll find out in your reading amen Mary got in such a way he said where is the body where is the body next thing you know she looked up she saw two angels uh, while the two angels was talking to and let her know he's risen amen then next thing you know Jesus Jesus start talking to him and he did it did like this Mary amen and she knew then because she thought it was the gardener amen she said oh master amen because it ain't nothing like when you want to hear his, his she know his voice and a stranger they
they will not. Ah, oh, come on here. Mary sat right there and heard his voice. And she realized there was the master. She was enthused to get around and get to the church and get them up out of that discouraged state. Get them up out of that state where they were unprofitable and inactive. They had stopped running, but Mary let them know, look, y'all, this thing has just begun. Everything he said was true. He said it was going to happen, but he is risen. And he's risen with all power in his hand. And so you can imagine, amen, what ends up happening. And all those disciples, the church, because in the church there's all type of believers. People are on different levels. Amen. And that's what we forget. Because as preachers, we think we can preach and make people. We think because you do it. And I, I, I look at here, all men is on a journey. And many times you might have to preach it. Somebody get it one time, preach it again. It may take somebody else ten times. But it's not for you to be worrying about if they get it. You just better obey God and do what he called you to do. Because when you get to worrying about that, you're worrying about too much. Amen. It's God's business. He's the one that give the increase. He He's the one all that increased the fruits of righteousness. He's the one that add to man's spiritual stature. I know it's a mess out here. Amen. Because there's a lot of men that have went for God. They got tired. They threw the towel in. And then we got some that was acting like they was doing it for God and they wasn't doing it for God. And I mean a lot of danger have come out of their mouths. And the people have been conditioned. But I'm coming to you as God's servant this morning to let you know, amen, in all of your running, you better look to Jesus. Jesus. And when you see Jesus, you realize he can help all and he can be in all. He can save all, deliver all because you know what? He means so much to you and you ain't worried about. I can tell men and women if he done it for me, he can do it for you. And so look at here, we are servants of the Lord. And Jesus was seeking to get his church up. And many times we look at the scriptures and what we end up doing is just looking at those that the scriptures are talking about. And so we'll look at Peter. We'll look at John. We'll look at Judas. Amen. But I need to let you know something. In all of your getting, we got to get an understanding and learn about our God. Because the eyes or the attention should really be upon him. Amen. He wasn't sitting right there balling the church up because they were there. He knew, amen, uh-uh, I'm not leaving them that way. And he knew the relationship that he had with many. Amen. That they're going to get up. They're going to get up. They're just holding. they just disappointed because they can't see no father. But God, amen, came and let them know, amen, it is me. I'm minded, amen, of Thomas. And they begin to tell the report because, see, when you talk about good news, that thing was spread. And I mean to tell you, it got to Thomas. And all of them is down and out and discouraged and disappointed. And they're talking about what they see now because I want to help you when you begin to grow because you're going to see some things that the next one that's not running, the one that has had not been revealed to you are gonna see some things that they have not seen yet but you got to be so inspired to run on for Jesus that that lack of sight won't impede you amen but it was Thomas that heard the news and they began to talk about it and Thomas said look at here amen I got to see it for myself unless I touch his wounds unless I put my hand in the nail scarred hands unless I see I saw it with my eyes when they stuck that javelin in him. Amen. I mean, and y'all talking about he risen. And y'all talking about, amen, he's not there. And you talking about, you heard him talking, he looked like the gardener. What are you saying, preacher? Amen. Look at here, you can't go off other people's testimonies. You got to see it for yourself. You got to get to know Jesus for yourself. And many times people have taken Thomas and they tagged him with doubting. Thomas is a doubter. Thomas was a Thomas was not a doubter. Thomas was one of them ones, amen, that you supposed to be like. Now, Thomas was like, I got to see it for myself. And you got to know God for yourself. You got to know God is real. You got to know God can help you. You got to know God can walk with you. And many times the preacher and the church won't allow people, amen, to develop to get to know them for themselves. We don't know how to encourage the baby. We don't know how to encourage 
encourage the children. We don't know how to encourage the brother and sister because he's not doing or she's not doing like you because you just, uh, I mean, you're Jesus' first cousin. We don't have long suffering, neither do we have patience. Amen. And we sit there and condemn and we judge so quick. But the Bible said, judge not a thing before it's time. You got to understand, amen. You got to give time, time. You got to let that thing that's been put in people, let that thing germinate and grow. What you need to do, amen, is get in God where you can encourage men and women. Don't never give up on God. Don't look back. Just run on in Jesus' name. If he said it, believe it. If it don't happen today, it may happen tomorrow. If it don't happen tomorrow, it may happen the next day. But I can rest assured if he said it, it's going to happen. And so you got to learn how to run and realize that you're not running, amen, in pain. You're not running after something that's not real. And what do you mean by that? I mean, if you come to know him and he performed a miracle in your life, if he knocked that out of you, not that cursing, not that drug, not that taste out of your mouth, not that lifestyle out of your life, you know he's real. And therefore, while you running this race and it got crooks and bends in it, and you get in them hard spots, you got to know the same God that performed that miracle in your life is there for you. Amen. He can help you get through it. He can help you get over it. What you got to do now is don't wait till it's all over. Don't wait till you see it with your 2020, but see it with your eyes of understanding and go to praising God. Because what I found out, if the church needs strength, then we got to let the joy of the Lord be our strength. And you can't get no joy looking at the government. You can't pull joy from heaven looking at the Republicans and looking at the Democrats. Joy comes from looking at Jesus. I'm minded in the Bible in Hebrew. He said, look at here, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, that for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. When you got joy, you got inspiration. When you got joy, here comes strength. I believe when Peter and John, that brother was running, I believe they ran and they was running with some expectation and they was running with some hope let it be so they was running with oh I believe when they was running things begin to come back to them amen because it's not until you begin to move your feet in the right direction and that direction got to be towards Jesus that he'll begin to give you what you need to make it all of this was for their growth and for their learning if they hadn't went through it they couldn't preach it to me and you but because they made it and didn't give up because they realized the race is not given to the swift, neither is it given to the strong. But he that endureth to the end, we're reading in the Bible now, amen. Because they was able to write it, they were able to talk about it, and because they got through the errors of adversity, we read and it gives us an encouragement that if God done it for them, then I'm that preacher that's gonna tell you he can do it for you, amen. Because at the end of the day, I got news for you. It's really not all about our biblical brethren, but it's about Jesus. I'll get quiet on that and say it again. It's really not about all of those amen that we read in the Bible, whether it was Zacchaeus, born of man, the woman at the well, and the way Paul wrote it so eloquently in Hebrew 11. And gave us a roll call about Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Noah, Samson, Joseph, Jacob. Amen. The way he wrote about it. Amen. And let them know it wasn't even all about them. Amen. I mean to tell you, he wrote about it. He said, by faith, these all obtained a good report. Amen. And I mean to say, if it wouldn't have been for faith, if it wouldn't have been who is our faith, Jesus. If it wouldn't have been for him, we wouldn't have known them to be who they were. Because God made them all. And that's why preaching like this, it brings you to a place. Uh, that you got to realize, amen, that God want a relationship with you. Amen. He want a personal relationship that you might know him for yourself. It's good if you got a pastor that know him. That pastor is preaching about what he know that you might come to know him. That you got to realize, amen, in your storms, uh, he can be a boat. Uh, in 
your storms, he can be a shelter. You got to realize in the fire, he gets in there with you too. Amen. He ain't always worried about moving the lion out and knocking the lion out. He can shut the mouth of the lion. And many people are going through some hardness and some tough times. And the enemy have come in with all his rigmarole. Amen. And caused people to get caught up in what he's doing. But I come this morning to tap you on your shoulder. Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Let's run this race. Amen. And let him mold us and develop us. All right. You wish you would have went through that better. It ain't over. Get up. You'll see it again. You got to roll up your spiritual sleeves and fight this devil. Don't you never get those so discouraged that you quit. Because God ain't got no quitters. We are none of them that draw back. When we're running, we'll never give up. I mean, when we're running, we're not going to just quit. Because God didn't quit on you. Don't you quit on him. Don't you stop believing that he's your healer. I mean to tell you, if you got to go out looking up, do like that. Because that's what Brother Stephen did. I mean, he went out looking up. I mean, he went out looking to God. God might not have rescued him from them stones. But brother, I mean, he rescued him from the evildoer. And he made heaven his home. You just got to keep holding on and hold on strong. Don't you never let the devil make you doubt him. You let him know I know too much about him. I believe he ordered my steps. He knows the way that I take. He sees what's before me. That's why he prepares me. Jesus told the church, I tell you these things before they happen. That when they happen, you might believe. I want you to know, though, though it look like that right now. I mean, I can overturn it. I mean, joy comes in the morning. You got to realize if you don't give up, you can get through it. If you don't get up, you can get to your destiny. Nation. If you don't get tired, that's why you got to learn how to gain strength. It was over there in the Bible where they talked about in the Old Testament. Amen. When they talked about over there, amen, they were going to run and not get walk and not get weary. Amen. Run and not faint. They were going to mount up with strength and take on the wings as an eagle. I mean, my God, amen. Well, the enemy have sought to wear them down because God. God is a God of love and a God of compassion. He is what's going to call on him and look to him. And when you look to him, brother, here comes help. Here comes your strength. Here comes your ability because God is for you. I'm letting men and women know that don't even know God. You might be in the gut of sin, but I'm telling you, God loves you and he's for you. He paid the price for you. You might be one amen that's still cutting up. Uh, uh, I don't look down on men when they sitting up there cursing. I don't look down on men because they still running around doing what I used to do. Because I remember I once was. And because of him, look at me now. Not because of what I've done. Jesus done it. And if he done it for me, then I'm sure he can do it for you. When you're running for Jesus, when you're running with an inspiration, when you're running with the fire of the Holy Ghost, when you're running with excitement, you're running with good news. You're running not with no bad news. Amen. It's, we, this gospel is good news. I know the way some people use it and present it. I mean, my God will tell them in a minute, to hell you're going. There ain't nothing good about that. Amen. I might be on my way to hell. How do I get off that road then? If you're going to tell me I'm on my way to hell, then point me to Jesus. Don't leave the man right there because that's what they did over there when Jesus gave the scenario about the Samaritan. Amen that fell among these leaving Jericho and the Levite saw him and, and looked on him and said oh and here come the priest he looked at him too and said oh but that Samaritan amen my God my God the one everybody had problems with that half breed so they thought Jesus said I'm going to use the Samaritan in this analogy and it's going to represent me because just like y'all didn't receive the Samaritan man what going to receive me. But it was the Samaritan that got right there 
that in the parable. Amen. And got what a man was. He didn't sit right there and worry about how clean he was. He didn't worry about the blood that was coming off the man. He didn't worry about the stink that was on the man. He sat right there, heard that groan. He didn't say, look, say, you done did something. They looked like they did a good job on you. I mean, my God, what did you do? He didn't do that. Jesus got right there. And the Bible said he bind up the wounds. He poured in the oil and wine. That means he took care of them and began to wash them off. He began to nurse, be a nurse unto them. All with the hope of him being healed. And I mean to tell you, he took care of them so good, he took them to put them in the inn. And then watch this, preachers, pastors, evangelists, prophets. This fivefold, he committed them into the hand of them and said, whatever you spend more, whatever you do more, I will repay you. Put him in the hands of somebody else that care like him. See it like he see it. One that he can use like the way he would do. He didn't put him in the hands of somebody that's going to blast him. He's already been wounded. He's already been hurt. He's already blood is coming out. You ain't got to kick him in his head. You might not know all what took place when he fell, but he knows and God knows. God is dealing with the attitude and disposition of the church that he called out. And he's been watching and seeing it don't line up with me. And so since it don't line up with me, you can't inherit what's in me. The love, the long suffering, the righteousness, the joy that the people of God have, it comes from him. So now many have been around a long time and I'm closing on this. And we develop the form. And we know how to do it. We know how to have church. But these attitudes is not like God. So we develop a form of God. But that power we deny. It ain't working in us. I don't know what you told me. I got power to cast out the devil. Not with a bad spirit. I got power to cast out a devil. Not with envy and jealousy in your heart. I got power to cast out a devil. Not with jesting and lying and riotous staring up. Now, I don't know you don't. Backbiting and all jesting. Come on here. Not, uh uh. You don't have that like that. You don't inherit that. Uh uh. You can't be. You got to be in his spirit to cast out a devil. Because when you cast out a devil, it's not you that's casting it out. It's him that's casting it out. And that's why we got to conduct ourselves like him. Because the devils, they fear and tremble at him. They're not, if they see you, they'll run through you. Amen. I mean to tell you, you don't believe in looking that book. That man tried to go do it and that devil put a whooping on him. Amen. And he told me, he said, look here. Uh uh. Now wait a minute. I mean, Paul and I know these other, but who are you? And they came out and put a, look, you can't cast out the devil in you. But you can cast out the devil in Christ. Because that's who he responds to. God is calling the church back to the power. And the power is in his glory. It's in him smothering you. It is the Lord that does it all. He said, without me, you can't do nothing. So we preach like this that you would run and be inspired to run to Jesus. Don't worry about folks, whatever they, some of these folks, we used to have it back then, I heard the church say, you don't worry about what the world is saying. But I, we done got to it at a point in 2022. Shoot, you, you got to watch what folks is in the building is saying. This thing has advanced. Because everybody that look like Jesus is not in Jesus. And we know this 
by the fruit they bear. When your spirit is not like his, he said, not me, you're none of his. But I got baptized. I got filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, maybe you did. and maybe. But do you know what? You ain't always had that spirit you got. You ain't always had that motivation you got either. We're not saying nothing about your experience. But right now, the Bible said he that have not his spirit is none of his. Oh, bless him. That's one thing you can't imitate. You can't just, you can't hypocrite his spirit. I can tell you that. I'm telling you that. You can try yourself to pretend, but when you ain't got it, you just ain't got it. Stand on your feet this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning, oh God, for this message. We thank you for these that have listening in, the hearers on in internet land. I pray that this word would inspire them to run. And when they run, they're not looking at everything, but they'll look unto you, the author and finisher of their faith. And the joy will come back as you would deal with them accordingly to who you are. Let the eyes be fixed on you. Let you be the measuring stick to them saying they are in you. Help the church align into your character, your spirit your mission, and your will that we find ourselves doing as you did. You sought to tell them way back then, go and do likewise. Help us to be like you. Help us to stop trying to be like the next preacher and the next big bishop and what this man do, but help men and women to preach unto people you that they can become like you like never before. Let there be a fresh anointing and a renewed spirit that will hit in the body of Christ that will cause a revival, a restoration to them that have lost his way, that have lost his inspiration, lost his joy, lost his effectiveness. Oh God, bring the church back to you. These things we pray and ask in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said amen. Amen. God bless you and keep you as our prayer. Let's give God a great big hand of praise. Now the grace of God and the sweet